and give the latest on the Michigan football scandal. And it's interesting because, you know, I've gotten a lot of this the last couple of weeks. Torres, nobody cares. You guys in the media are going out of your way to overplay this. Nobody cares. I would actually say it's the exact opposite. I think more people care than anybody realizes. I'm doing radio interviews in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and Little Rock, Arkansas, and College Station, Texas. This is all anybody wants to talk about. It's new. It's different. Um, it involves the team that we all thought was the best team in college football. Now none of us know exactly what to think of them. And so I bring it up because it's fascinating. There's always a new layer, and it's not black and white. There's not an easy, this is right, this is wrong, this was this, this was Like, it, it's complicated. It's layered. It's nuanced. And there's always new information coming out. And so it's interesting because the latest new information was actually something we talked about here on the pod last week. And I want to take a minute and give you guys and girls credit because when you actively, it's a little pat on the back, a little humble brag. When you actively choose to listen to the Aaron Torres pod and Aaron Torres pod YouTube, we talk about stuff and tell you about stuff days in advance, weeks in advance, stuff that nobody else is talking about. And then it comes out two, three, four, five, six days later. It happens all the time. No big deal. It's what I do. I don't really care if I get credit or not. But remember, last Friday, we talked about the latest piece of news in this Michigan scandal. Last Friday, the NCAA was on campus with Michigan. And a lot of people ask me, Torres, what's going to happen? Can the NCAA do anything? I said, the NCAA can't really do anything because the NCAA procedures are pretty straightforward. They have to write up what's called a notice of allegations after they do the investigation. And even if they did that in record time, Michigan has 90 days to respond to it. And so nothing from the NCAA perspective can happen this year. But if you go back to Friday's show and listen to what I said, I said bluntly, I said the thing that nobody's talking about, the Big Ten could decide to come in and punish Michigan unilaterally of the NCAA. They don't need to wait. They don't need to collect data. They don't need nine to give Michigan 90 days to respond. If they feel like something has been done wrong, they can come in and essentially say, hey, guys, we we believe you, you screwed with sportsmanship. You screwed with the integrity of this conference. We don't want you representing us in the postseason, in a bowl game, in the playoff, pretty much anything. And I said last week, I said, I don't think the Big Ten is actually going to do that. But they have the ability to, and I said, I guarantee you, they are going to get pressure from other schools to do exactly that. And so why do I bring it up? What is the latest twist? Oh, I don't know. Literally that exact same thing came out on late Wednesday. Pete Thamel, great reporter, not criticizing him because he just, maybe he just listens to the Air Tours pod. I don't know. But he put out a report that on Wednesday afternoon, the Big Ten coaches got on a call. They did the, the normal thing. Then Harbaugh was asked to leave. And basically over the next hour, basically everybody just tore Michigan to shreds. And essentially the gist of the call was the Big Ten's other 13 schools trying to pressure the new Big Ten commissioner, Tony Petiti, into punishing Michigan, saying you don't have to wait for the NCAA. You can do it yourself. Here is a direct quote from Pete Thamel's article. It said, collectively, the coaches want the Big Ten to act right now. A source familiar with the call said, what are we waiting on? We know what happened. So basically, it's exactly what I told you, is the Big Ten coaches are trying to pressure the new uh, commissioner, Tony Petiti, to make a move, punish Michigan, and make sure that they don't represent uh, the Big Ten in the college football playoff postseason, whatever. So now the question becomes, is anything going to happen? Is the Big Ten actually going to have the guts to do it? Should they even do it? And that's what I want to talk about now. Thank you, everybody, as always, for your support of the Aaron Torres Pod and Aaron Torres Pod YouTube channel. And we have a major announcement as legal sports betting is now in the state of Kentucky. That is right. The Aaron Torres Pod and Aaron Torres Pod YouTube has partnered with DraftKings Sportsbook and the DraftKings Sportsbook app. And here is the best part. DraftKings has an incredible offer for listeners of the Aaron Torres Pod who are first-time customers with DraftKings. This is the deal. Here is what you need to know. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Bet $5 on any game, just $5, and you get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you use the promo code TORUS. That's right. It's that simple. Again, first-time customers, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Bet $5 on any game, pro, college, any sport you want, and get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you use the code TORUS. Thank you to our new partners, DraftKings Sportsbook. Thrilled to be working with them. Take advantage of their offer now. Bluntly, I'll be honest. I don't think Tony Petiti is going to do anything. And as a matter of fact, I'll take it a step further. 
as of a week ago, I'm certain he wasn't going to do anything. Because after I talked about it on the show on Friday, and even before, I, you know, I made a few phone calls, people in the know, in the Big Ten kind of footprint. What they told me is Petiti has no real interest in doing this, right? He's a brand new commissioner. He took the job in the summer. He's not from college sports. He's trying to get into the landscape of college football and college sports. Keep in mind, this is all going on while the Big Ten is set to integrate four new teams, USC, UCLA, Washington, and Oregon, over the next couple months. Um, they got schedules. They got travel. They got logistics. He has 18, 19, 20 sports under his watch. And oh, by the way, Michigan is still a great team. We don't know how much this is impacting their success. And like, it's good. Like if they're really good and they go to the college football playoff and they win, that's great for the Big Ten. So I don't think he wants to get involved. I don't think he will get involved. But I will say, I think it's going to get interesting over the next couple of weeks. And I actually think the most important thing that could happen in this investigation, in this whole this whole part of it, is what happens when Michigan actually takes the field? Because it's interesting. I was thinking about this over the last couple of days. Michigan, usually when you get a buy in week eight, week nine, week 10, it's a good thing. Recharge the batteries. Nick Saban actually said it earlier this week. He said, we needed the buy. I love having the buy late in the year. It just gives us a chance to recharge. It was actually the worst possible thing that could have happened to Michigan. Because when you look at Michigan, I mean, think about it. This scandal basically breaks like a day before the, the Michigan State game. Then they go into the bye last week, and every single day there's a new story. The Washington Post story, the ESPN story. They're buying tickets in the Big Ten. They're buying tickets in the SEC. Uh, you know, Connor Stallions, that profile comes out. Every single day there's a new twist to this narrative. And they can't get back on the field and change the narrative in a good or bad way. And so a lot of whether I think the, 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 there's anything that's really going to come of this, the Big Ten schools wanting the Big Ten to investigate, I think it really just depends on how Michigan looks on the field. And I think one of two things is going to happen, and it's going to work out well for one side or the other. Either Michigan is going to come back out, kick the crap out of everybody, win the Big Ten, and then at that point, there really isn't much anybody can say, right? Because at this point, you can argue, you know, that the the Nebraska game was tainted and the, uh, you know, the Minnesota game was tainted, whatever. But you can't sit there and say, like, uh, you know, that 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 that's why they beat Penn State and Ohio State. Connor Stallions is gone. Nobody's scouting anybody in person from the Michigan perspective. And oh, by the way, they're not stealing your sides either. And if you were dumb enough not to change your sides, that's on you. So if they come out and they win the Ohio State game and the Penn State game a week from now. Well, uh, what, what are you going to say? They're the better team. They deserve to win. Good for them. Like, if you're, if you're Penn State and you can't beat them, maybe it's just because they're better than you. If you're Ohio State and you can't beat them, it's because they're better than you. I also think the opposite could happen as well. If Michigan loses, this whole story from the Big Ten's perspective goes away. I don't think Minnesota people really care if Minnesota's mad that Michigan, Michigan destroyed them. If Ohio State wins, then they're the best team in the Big Ten. We all make fun of Harbaugh. And, like, I'm not going to make fun of Harbaugh, but, like, that's going to be the narrative on social media. He couldn't win without Connor Stallions. Connor Stallions is the secret weapon. And then this goes away. And so I think if you're Jim Harbaugh, just survive until Saturday. Now, I will say Saturday against Purdue is going to be very interesting because I, 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 I do think this narrative is going to go one of two directions, depending on how things go against Purdue. One, if you beat Purdue like 52 to three, they're a 32 and a half point favorite. You beat them 52 to three, then it becomes like, they're just awesome. Like, like they didn't need Connor Stallions. They didn't need to steal signs. They're just really good. Then you get Penn State next week. Then you see how the rest of the season plays out. I'd also say the opposite, too. If that game's like 21-17 deep into the fourth quarter, you know everybody's going to be making jokes about Connor Stallions and this and that and the other thing. So if you're Michigan, you need to get back on the field and you need to change the narrative immediately. Go out there, destroy Purdue, beat Penn State, and go into the final two weeks against Maryland and against Ohio State and prove to everybody that you are the best team in the Big Ten. But if you lose, if you lose some games, then the questions start becoming, okay, it was probably with Connor Stallions. But as far as the Big Ten stuff is concerned, listen, bluntly, we'll see if anything changes. But once they get back on the field, I, I don't think people in the Big Ten are going to have a, a leg to stand on. They're either really good and they're going to win the conference, or Connor Stallions played a bigger role and they are not good and they're going to end up not winning the conference. And we know that, you know, the last couple of years may have been fraudulent. So we will see what happens, but I don't expect anything to happen. The NCAA investigation is a different deal. 
until further notice, I would expect Michigan to uh, Michigan to kind of chug along as they have been.